Before I start this video, I'm gonna rip off the band-aid on this one. You can't fix her. She's way too unhinged. Don't let that jingle dancing video from Billy Billy fool you. You can, however, use her to help you clear every single current and future in-game content. Here's my complete guide on how to Jing Liu. Before we start, let's settle some terminologies here. Spectral transmigration states. That's a mouthful. Just pretend I did not download the latest dictionary DLC. I will call that the enhanced form. Syzygy stacks. Would just be stacks. Her two skills, Moon on Glacial River and Transcendent Flash, will just be enhanced skill and basic skill. We're trying to be straightforward here. This is an anime fight where we need dramatic skill names. This video will be longer than my usual ones, so the timestamps are available below. You can skip the specific sections if you want. In a game where a damage deal with enough resources can clear any content basically, where does Jing Liu stand out? As a destruction character, she is going to eat well no matter which combat direction Hoyo decides to lean on in the future. The fight has multiple enemies. Jing Liu in her enhanced form has cleave damage. In her enhanced form, she has 50% crit boost. I have a confession to make. I suck at math. When they introduced alphabets into my math classes, that's when the only alphabet I kept seeing was NT. Stands for nice try kids, see you in summer school. Skill issues. But even I can tell you 50% crit rate means you can easily get at least 20 additional crit rates from your relic subs. The lucky ones might even get close to 50% crit rate from the substats alone. Don't believe me? Let me map this out for you. Each upgrade in a crit rate substat provides approximately 2.5% to 3.2%. For the sake of clarity, let's assume all your relics have 3% crit rates at plus 0. Your helmet goes up to plus 15 and only enhances the crit rate once. That 3% crit rate is now 5.5% crit rate. Repeat that for the hands, for the armor, for the boots, for the rope, and the orb. That's 5.5 times 5, which is 27.5%. Now add the helmet crit as well to that 27.5% and you get a total of 33%. This is only assuming the crit rate substat increased once for the entire plus 15. You can picture how Jing Liu can realistically get close to 100% crit rate if your relic substats get a few more rolls in the right places. But do remember that's only for her enhanced form. This free 50% crit rate makes your life much much easier in relic farming. Speaking of relic farming, Jing Liu has several speed related traits making it much easier to increase her speed to potentially surpass any Harmony characters such as Branya, who for the most part might be using the speed sets. What about single target enemy? For you gamers with her E1, that's all I need to say. However, for those of you with her E0 only, let's talk about her enhanced skill. Most of her skill's damage is focused on a single target with adjacent enemies receiving a lower amount of damage. With her enhanced skill, Jing Liu is constantly dealing the same amount of damage to the primary boss, rather the ads are present or not. Once again, this discussion is based on the assumption that she's as E0. She is incredibly user-friendly and offers remarkable flexibility. She consumes far less SP compared to Daniel Hung. Yet her damage output is on par with that of Imagine Dragon. You don't need to surround her with multiple SP batteries. This is a difference maker. Cooler Daniel only has one playstyle, and that is give me all the SP playstyle. Jing Liu, on the other hand, can be in different teams taking on different roles. She can be the main hyper carry in her own hyper carry team, or she can be a sub damage dealer on the blade team. Why is SP so important? Well, without SP, your team is basically useless. Quick reminder, Jing Liu is SP efficient, not SP positive. There's a difference. Jing Liu is still using up SP, just not nearly as fast as the other existing damage dealer in the game. That's why she's efficient, but she's not positive. She's not generating any SP for you. So keep that in mind when you play her. Now let's move on to how to play Jing Liu. What is her playstyle? Think of her basic form as an average college student. 
Her enhanced form is a six-year-old child prodigy who is graduating with 10 different degrees, is in a band with the future guardian of Bellabok, and is a child that your parents keep comparing you to. No matter what team you put her in, you have one objective. That is to get her into her enhanced form as soon as possible. Jing Liu has a self-buff from her talents. Mainly, she converts the HP she drains into attack percents. Math time. We know the following. She gains 550% of the total HP consumed from allies. That attack percent boost is capped at 180% of her base attack. Her base attack is 679 from character level. And then you add however many you get from your light cone. In this case, I'm using her signature light cone, so that's 582. The sum of those two numbers is 126 base attack. 180% of 1,261 is 2,269.8. That is the max attack she can gain from her HP drain. 540% of what number gets us to 2,269.8. So we just use a simple math equation. X times 5.4 equals 2,269.8. X equals 420. This means Jing Liu needs to drain 420 HP total from her three teammates combined. That means individually 420 divided by 3 is 140. Each teammate will need to lose 140 HP from Jing Liu's 4% drain. 140 divided by 0 0.04 will give us the HP needed to get the max attack percent for Jing Liu. And that number is 3,500. This means Jing Liu needs her teammates to have 3,500 HP or more. This does not mean all of her teammates need to have 3,500 HP. For instance, you have a tanky teammate like Blade who has 6 to 8,000 HP. The rest of your team does not need to have as much as 3,500 anymore because Blade can cover any deficit from the other two teammates. So the rule of thumb is to always make sure the HP of all three teammates combined is over 10,500 HP. Moving on, you want to always use her ulti when she's still in her enhanced form. Preferably at the start of her enhanced form. There are two reasons for this. One, it does more damage when used in her enhanced form. Two, it procs the ice relic set, which I assume many of you are using. There is a very important mechanic I need to address in case some of you don't know. Whenever she enters her enhanced form, she gets 100% action advance. When she gets her action advance, any buff on her prior will lose a turn count. Let me do a quick battle simulation to make it easier to understand. At the start of the battle, Jinglo uses her basic skill and she gets one stack. Branya uses her skill on Jinglil. Jinglil gets to attack again and she gains a damage percent buff for one turn. Jing Liu uses her basic skill again. Now she has two stacks, which means she goes into enhanced form. And once she gets her enhanced form, she gets her first action advance, meaning she gets to attack again. But the damage buff that she got from Branya earlier is gone because that buff only lasts for one turn. This interaction isn't exclusive to Branya. Any buff that has a duration on Jing Liu will interact the same way. So think of Tengyu's ulti, it works the same way, it's just that it lasts for 2 turns. To summarize the segment, when using Jing Liu, we want to keep the following points in mind. Number 1. Get her to an enhanced form as soon as possible. Number 2. Her teammates should have a combined HP pool of 10,500 HP. This way, she gets the maximum attack boost that she can get from her HP drain. Number 3. Use her OT only during enhanced form if you can help it for maximum damage. Number 4. Be mindful of her 100% action advance on her enhanced form. She will lose a turn count on her buffs. Before I continue to relics, if you liked the video so far, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. Feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions. Now we're at the topic of relics. Oh boy. This subject is very interesting. For most of the other damage dealers, it is very intuitive when it comes to which relic set to use. No, seriously, it's, it's very easy. Fire damage dealer, use the fire set. The wind damage dealer, not you, Blade, use the wind set. The lightning damage dealer, uses the lightning set. 
It's okay, Jing Yuan. Maybe you'll get your follow up on Tag Relic sets somewhere in the future. If I had to put a percent on it, I'll say it's 1.5%. She has two Relic paths she can take. One is a standard Ice set, and the other is a Quantum set. The key concern regarding the Ice set is that the four piece bonus is only active after Jing Liu uses her ulti which will give her a 25% crit damage boost for two turns. This is a little bit awkward when it comes to the timing. The quantum set has an effect of ignoring 10% defense with an additional 10% if the enemy has quantum weakness. This set combos very well with Pella and or Silver Wolf. Silver Wolf can also guarantee quantum weakness, which in turn guarantees the additional 10% defense they ignore. The general consensus is that the Quantum Set does more damage against Quantum Weakness enemies. The Ice Set does more damage overall against non-Quantum Weakness enemies. Her best 2 piece is Arena and there's no competition here. The set bonus is perfect for her. She can easily reach the 7% crit rate required for the bonus set because she gets a free 50% crit rate once she enters her enhanced form. The decision here is really up to you. There are situations where the quantum set is better, but the ice set also has a situation where it is better. In my opinion, pick the one you have the more relics of. If you're starting fresh, then quantum set has more value in farming. Now, what are the main stats and the substats that she wants? Let's start with the easy one, the substats first. Crit damage, crit rate, speed, and attack. For main stats, she wants crit damage body, Speed or attack boots, attack rope or energy regen rope, ice orb or attack percent orb. There's a reason why I gave two options here for the main stats. Just pick the one with better substats. Don't rip out your hair trying to farm the perfect, perfect substat. I know about the struggle of trying to find the perfect piece, and I doubt most of us will ever get the perfect piece. So just make do with whichever piece has the better substats. Light cones. Her best light cone is her signature light cone. I will change my username to the baddest duck if this isn't true. Her light cone works best on her. It won't be nearly as viable for other destruction characters. So don't pull it for other destruction characters. There's one very simple reason for that. The stacks of Eclipse reset when the user of the Light Cone attacks. This includes follow-up attack. No other destruction character can consistently and reliably get the three stacks for the Light Cone before it resets from attacking. Jing Liu on the other hand easily gets all three stacks every time she attacks in her enhanced form. Now, not everyone's wallet weighs the same. So for those of us who can't get her signature Light Cone, here are the free to play options. This also means I won't mention any signature light cones from other limited 5 star characters. The Herder Shop's Destruction Light Cone. It is her second best light cone and by far the easiest it gets for any and all players. The damage is solid and it's very easy to superimpose it to level 5. It is the perfect second choice. Now, for some reason, if you don't have that, here's another solid choice a Secret Vow. A Secret Vow increases damage percent. Jing Liu already has a huge amount of attack percent from her own talents, so having damage percent is great. The issue here is that she'll probably not get the second bonus effect from the light cone that often. Its secret vow is a gotcha light cone, so some of you may not have it. Here's another one. Under the blue sky is another good alternative. The bonus courage you get from this might actually be exactly what she needs to push her to 100% crit rate. The other one is the most welcome you. In case you don't have those three gacha light cones, the other choices will be the three star light cone, Collapsing Sky. It's just a basic skill damage increase. It's a nice last resort to have. I strongly, strongly recommend the Herda light cone if you don't have the signature light cone. It is easily the most accessible to all players. And the second conditional effect is not too hard to achieve since you will be bringing Jing Lil to all her ice weakness boss fights anyways. Eidolons. Eidolons is the most straightforward subject to talk about. First and foremost, it is never worth it to spend tickets on Eidolons 
versus spending tickets to get a new character. A new character will always, always help your account way more than any Eidolon levels, at least in this current state of the game. With that said, her E1 is still very tempting. The best stopping point for Eidolon is actually her E1. It gives the best performance boost close to that of the Lake Cone. The other notable Eidolons is her E4. This lowers the threshold for the total HP needed for Jinglo's team to gain her max attack percent from her talent. Now let me briefly mention the Light Cone versus her Eidolon 1. Which one should you go for? This one is fairly simple. Go for the Light Cone. We're doing simple risk versus reward here. Light Cone banners have a lower pity count and is 7525 instead of 5050. It is statistically much more likely for people to get the light cone than it is to get Jing Liu in the character banner. The numbers don't lie. It is true that there's more value in the character banner than there is in the light cone banner, but the extra 25% chance to win that coin flip is much more important and worth it, in my opinion. Jing Liu has many potential teammates. Depending on who you put around her, her role on the team might even change. It is important to understand that there is no perfect team comp for Jing Liu. Depending on enemies, depending on the content, different team comps have advantages. It is up to you to ultimately decide how to build what teammates around her. But I can always give you some examples. Number 1. I like to call this team Blade Suffering Continues. This team consists of Jing Liu, Blade, Branya or Pella, and a healer, usually Locha or Lynx. The entire purpose of this team is to play around Blade's talent stacking. Blade's HP is high enough to get Jing Liu to reach a max attack percent from her drain. Every time Jing Liu attacks in her enhanced form, she drains from Blade, which in turn gets him a stack. It's actually much safer for Blade to get a stack from Jing Liu than to get slapped across the face by any boss. The amount she drains is nothing compared to the damage Blade can receive from a monkey punch. Brawny allows you to get Jing Liu to attack more, which means more stacks for Blade. Her ult also benefits both of the damage dealers on the team. Pella is a good substitute if you don't have a Brawny. Her defense shred is beneficial to both damage dealers on the team. Her E4 also allows you to further any ice resistance dread, and she was also one of the best SP batteries in the game. Locha is Locha. Ever heard of Locha Gaming? He can do anything. Lynx is a good substitute if you don't have Locha. As a Natasha 2.0, she can heal, she can AoE cleanse. Her skill does increase aggro when used on Jing Liu or Blade, so keep that in mind if you do decide to run Lynx. The second team is Hyper Carry Jing Liu. This team consists of Jing Liu, Pella or Ting Yun, Branya, and a healer. Unlike the previous team mentioned earlier, this team is all about Jing Liu and getting her to hit as much and as hard as possible. In simple terms, Jing Liu does big PP damage. Pella is there to shred enemy defense. This is even better with E4 Pella. Ting Yun is good alternative for Pella since she buffs and her ult regen is extremely helpful for Jin Liu who has the highest ult cost in the game currently. Brana is just a no-brainer. Here are some tips and tricks that some of you may not know. When you only have one stack left in her enhanced form after you use her skill, which consumes her last stack, there is a timing window where you can use her ult which will allow her to stay in her enhanced form for one more turn. You can switch to a different character without losing the force field. There is the Abundance Battle Pass Light Cone that you can get called Warmth Shortens the Cold Knight. At Superimpose 5, it can actually offset the 4% life drain from Jing Liu. The only issue is that this is not accessible for free to play players. So I didn't mention it earlier at all at the Light Cone segment. Here is a very simple combo sequence for a Jing Liu, Branya, and a Ting Yun team. This is to achieve one of Jing Liu's highest possible damage outputs. When Jing Liu enters her enhanced form, use Branya's ult, and then use Jing Liu's ult. Before Jing Liu uses her enhanced skill, make sure to use Ting Yun's skill on Jing Liu. 
Now, Jing Liu should have the buffs from both Branya and Ting Yun, as well as any Ice Relic set if you're using it. Her enhanced skill here should do some big PP damage. Another positive about this is that Jing Liu should be very close to getting her ult again, because her enhanced skill gives her energy regen, plus the 50 or 60 from Ting Yun, depending on Ting Yun's Eidolon level, of course. This will allow Jing Liu to possibly get her ult again before her enhanced form runs out, meaning she gets to stay in that form a little bit longer. Honkai is a very intricate game, despite its status as a mobile turn-based game. There are numerous approaches to building Jing Liu, and it's possible that I may have overlooked some aspects. This guide isn't intended to prescribe a specific playstyle for Jing Liu. Consider everything I've said with an open mind, but please note that not everything I've covered in this video is guaranteed to be 100% accurate. Certain details might vary depending on specific scenario and future content. For instance, right now, Intact% percent Rope is more preferred than Engine Regen Rope. That may not be the case if, let's say, a certain healer comes out that can give energy to the whole team, which may allow Jing Liu to get her ult one turn faster with ER Rope, maybe even two turn faster. Maybe this will mean Ting Yun is much more preferred than Appella. I'm not saying that that will happen, but I'm just keeping the doors open that things can always change. And what might be Jing Liu's best in slots might not be two months down the line. That is why you should subscribe to this channel to keep updated on any future Jing Liu content. Thanks for watching, thumbs up the video if it was helpful, and I will see you in the next video. The Topaz video.